One of the biggest challenges to the Division C bridge rules this year can be summarized with this simple picture. The block that needs to pass through the entire span of the bridge is 7 by 12 centimeters. 7 centimeters wide is 2 centimeters larger than the 5 by 5 loading block. Another challenge for both Division B and C is the 5 kilogram bonus for holding the entire 15 kilogram weight. This makes it very important to hold the entire 15 kilograms for maximum scoring. The obvious question is, what is a good design using the minimum possible additional mass to support the loading block? I'm a very big fan of keeping things as simple as possible for these types of situations. The more simple the design, the more repeatable and reliable it will be. The most simple design possible would be to use just two cross support beams to support the loading block. By varying the density of the balsa, it's possible to use the exact same dimensions to study the strength versus mass. I have chosen 5 32nd of an inch thick balsa with a beam height of 10 millimeters and a span length of 8 centimeters. These dimensions seem reasonable to start with for this year's rules, but by no means are the only possible solution. It's not often that you can isolate and completely test a subcomponent of a more complex design, but here we can easily create simple devices that simulate the top of a bridge with two member cross supports. Here I've built five identical cross support tests using different density beams, ranging from 0.29 grams to 0.66 grams each. The goal here is to figure out approximately what density is ideal for guaranteeing it will hold 15 kilograms, but not too much more as anything over that would mean excess mass in the bridge. Here is a nice comparison of the beams showing the total mass for each pair. We have a range here of over 2.2x and it should provide a nice range of strength. If you are wondering how I got pieces like this, I highly recommend you check out my Creating a Balsa Library video where I go into that in great detail. Here I'm showing the mass of the loading block and S-hook I'm using and the tension load cell itself. This is the dead weight not registered by the dynamic loading process. So to get the final actual mass held, I need to add 116 grams to what the display says after it breaks. Here is the testing in progress. I'm loading sand in a funnel off screen to the left and it's flowing down the PVC pipe into the hanging bucket. My load cell is measuring the mass of the bucket and sand in real time as it's being loaded. This setup is really nice as the display will keep its final maximum load so it's not important to stop the sand once the device breaks. I have seen some cases where the shock of the bucket landing resets the display or makes it display something crazy, but when you're filming the loading process, it's easy to pick off the maximum load when it breaks. The actual device on top is way overexposed in this shot because I need to have enough light on the subject to record my high speed camera at 3000 frames per second. Here you can see the 0.29 gram beams failed at 13.71 kilograms in a very nice fashion. It definitely broke along the tall part of the beam. This is probably an ideal case for this density of wood. Note that it's less than 15 kilograms, so this wouldn't be a good choice. Now I'm testing the 0.35 gram beams and have started the video at around 10 kilograms to save some time. This time the beams only held 11.48 kilograms, and you can clearly see that the failure mode was it tipping over as probably internally one side collapsed before the other. Now we're up to 0.41 grams per beam and I've started the video at around 12.5 kilograms. This time it also failed by tipping but now we're over that magic target of 15 kilograms with a failure at 15.89 kilograms. This would be about the minimum I would use when trying to guarantee 15 kilograms. Here are the 0.49 gram beams starting at almost 14 kilograms. Again, you can see the beam crushing and then tipping over, but this time we have a really nice maximum load of 16.7 kilograms. This would be a more comfortable zone to be in when trying to guarantee a 15 kilogram maximum load. Finally, here are the 0.66 gram beams. As I'm starting at over 21 kilograms, you know it's gonna get crazy. I basically used all the sand at around 24 kilograms, but I really wanted it to break, so I started adding steel weights. It 
It held a ridiculous 28.96 kilograms before breaking. And as you can see, my support base for the cross members is being crushed. This is obviously way too strong as we have a lot of extra wasted mass. In summary, a very simple design is possible and I would say desirable. With an 8 cm span width using 5 32 inch thick balsa and 10 mm height, the sweet spot is right around 0.45 grams per beam. This certainly doesn't prove that this is the only possible design, but what it does show is that if you have a design in mind, you definitely want to test it in isolation, and if you aren't below about 0.9 grams total, a more complex design isn't worthwhile. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. Please consider subscribing for more content like this in the future.